First things first, Riley. How are you? I'm good. Okay. I'm happy. What I want to start with is um, you released quite quite some albums in, in recent years. Um, all kinds of you, 2014, Primrose Green, 2015. Then you released our record store. Then you released uh, Cannot. And now another album. What what keeps your a drive going and what, what makes you so um, prolific in writing in a sort of sense in a sense um, well I guess the more records I do the more opportunities I have to tour and I like touring a lot and all my friends and I we I mean in our free time we just jam you know it's kind of a big thing and where I come from is a lot of collaboration you know if you just want to have a pickup band for the day. You can just call a few people up and record and maybe put it out. It's a lot of fun to do, I guess, to put out records, you know, mm. so the more I can do, the happier I am, for sure. Does every project, every album, does it have its own identity then? Because, like you said, it kind of arises uh, spontaneously? Yeah, well, I guess that depends on the personality of the musicians or artists you're working with. Um, but yeah, every record has a different personality in a different context, which is recorded in a different approach, um, you know, in a sort of different musical relationship with the people in the other, in the other bands. So yeah, definitely. So how do you pick people to play with? Is it, is it very um, arbitrary, so to say, just the people that... No, I mean, it's, it's usually pretty, like, a, a calculated choice okay. you make with somebody, you know, like, usually, usually just with my friends, you okay. know. I have a lot of friends, I mean, it's like a laundry list of records I'm supposed to make. You yeah. know, everybody has like projects that have never come to fruition or anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, just friends of mine, like, hey, let's record sometime. You know, or I mean, with my my records, like my record records, you know, I mean, the band has been pretty much the same. Okay. But you know, yeah, as far as collaborations go, it's just always friends or colleagues or whatever. You know. And is this born out of, because I, well, I've spoken to you before, and then, and, uh, well, you're from Chicago, and there, there's a very healthy uh, music scene there. So is, is that part of it, where you grew up and kind of uh, developed your craft? Yeah, I don't know if it's, an in, maybe it is an intrinsic part of the music scene there is collaboration. I guess historically, you know, like with all the jazz people mm -hmm. and um, experimental musicians there, there's always been a lot of collaboration. When I started in music there, there's like a lot of ad hoc sort of groups that always pop up, you know, that was just kind of part of the scene where I came up in, mm -hmm. like the noisy weirdo basement scenes, there's like a new band every week and you just call it like, you know, dump truck or fart spleen or something, you know, and like, hey, you got a band now, you know, it's just, it's always kind of instantaneous, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that might be a better descriptor of the the music scene is very instantaneous and ad hoc and just on the spot. So well, you mentioned this jazz influence, and so has has it had an influence on you as well, the jazz, and in, in terms of improvisation? Yeah, I mean that'd be a big part of it for sure. Definitely a one piece of the puzzle. Um, I guess the energy and um, I guess the risk taking involved with free jazz and stuff is a big part. I can't say I'm a jazz player at all. That'd be a, a farce to people who, you know, actually play jazz. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess like the, just the overall free energy of it was really inspiring. And I love those, tons of those records, you know, and a lot of my friends are deeply involved within that scene. So yeah, the, I would certainly say it has an influence on uh, the improvising that I do within my music, which is kind of more jamming, hmm. you know. I'd say it's more in the jamming spectrum of things. And in, in that sense, then, do you, you say you play, you play with friends, where do these jam sessions uh, occur? Is it, do, do you set out a time to do it at home? or? Yeah, I mean, or at a practice space, or at, usually there'll just be a gig, and sort of like, hey, you want to hop on this gig? Okay. You know, at like an Italian restaurant or something, and there's like an improv night there, and somebody will bring a bass, somebody will bring keys, I'll bring a guitar, you know. So there's like a lot of pickup gigs that you can hop in on. Um, they're just improv things, typically with jazz players. 
Well, what has this taught you about music? Because, well, improvising, you have to be quite quick and then uh, able to adapt to, 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 to what others are playing. So what has that taught you about music and, and what you make yourself? I think listening is probably the, the most important thing that I get out of it. I mean, there's a million great books on the subject, you mm -hmm. know, like Derek, this guitarist Derek Billet has this book called Improvisations, okay. which is like goes into deep detail with all sorts of different players about that. Um, uh, I, I'm digressing. I mean, like without getting <laughs> academic, I guess it just helps me listen. Mm -hmm. It helps me build musical relationships with people, which is a really hard thing to find. You know, so many people go their whole lives playing with, you know, the same three or four people, which is great. But, you know, I, I'm really eager to play with as many different people as I can and learn from them and feed off of their energy. I mean, doing those kind of uh, gigs at, like, small cafes or bars or whatever has really made me a better player, f for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of like finding interesting phrases that you can kind of fall into, you know, purely just out of the magic of the moment and at the show, you know, so that's, that's really special and it's really helped me along the way for sure. You say it's difficult to form musical relationships with, with people, how come? Well, I mean, it's just everybody can be so focused on themselves mm -hmm. and, you know, they're kind of set boundaries that they have for themselves, you know, with the people they play with. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, a lot of people are lucky if they find two or three people in their lives they can play music with and make it work really well. You know, um, so I, I'm so fortunate to live in a city where there's so many great musicians. So I feel really, really blessed and lucky. And like, that's kind of the, the energy of the music there is like, you know, oh man, I gotta play with this guy, we gotta play with this guy. Man, if you guys play together, you'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's always a really magic moment for me. Cause it could be hard to, you know, meet a lot of people who, to play with. It's just social anxiety, I guess, for some people, or just not willing to or not wanting to. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a special thing, you know, to, to find people you really click with, you know. And in that sense, then, is, is music a, a fluid thing for you? Because, well, you, you mentioned that jazz is part of it, but then Chicago also has a rich blues history. Sure. Uh, you're, you're more from a folk tradition as well. So is it very fluid where you go with your music? Yeah, I think everybody kind of hangs with everybody. That, that's a really, really, really great part of Chicago music, too. Um, a lot of people, it's kind of a cliche term, like there's no lines in the sand, but there really isn't. And that's why, you know, I play with jazz, mostly jazz people in my, in my band, on my records and on tours. And that's because, you know, the, the music in Chicago cross-pollinates so well. Because I just play, you know, I guess folky, leaning music, and I sing, and you know, so to have at my disposal, you know, some really great friends who are, you know, just really top-notch jazz people, some of the best, best, best guys in the world. Mm -hmm. To have them on board is just proof that you know, Chicago is an incredibly fluid music scene. And again, like going back to when I was like 18 years old, there'd be like you know minimal techno followed by a hardcore band yeah. and then a noise band. And then, or you know, a folk thing. It's just kind of how it works. And I think it was it's it was always kind of deliberate too. It wasn't like, oh, these are the only four people that could possibly play on a you know Wednesday night. I think I remember booking shows at like house gigs and stuff and being like, what weird, like what, what's the weirdest sort of lineup we could possibly do? You know, because it's fun. It's you know, it's like a a sampler platter of all you know different types of music. Um, that you can host for the night, and that's really exciting. Were you at that age, uh, around 18, were you ever tempted to, to pick up the electric guitar and, and branch out, so to say, with... with, with uh... That's what I mostly was doing when okay. I was 18. Okay. I probably didn't really start playing acoustic guitar on the regular, I mean, doing what I do now, I guess, until I was like 19, 20. I was mostly playing okay. in like, uh, a lot of like a lot of noise bands and stuff and punk bands up up until I was like 20. What what changed then around 20 where you, where you picked up the acoustic? Uh, I guess I don't know if much changed or if there's like this big sort of revelation. Right. I think I just practiced it more. 
Mm. And there was a lot of cool music around that time coming out that was acoustic guitar based, and I think that really attracted me. Okay. And I kind of just wanted to emulate that and do that. Um, I mean, I was still playing electric guitar concurrently with that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, and I just started to do it more instead of, because I would do like solo electric guitar things. Mm -hmm. um, not really finger picking, just kind of like loopy, droney things. Um, I just remember that being growing, you know, that being growing. Yeah, they were, I don't know why, they were just an amazing band. I was super obsessed with them. So like music kind of <laughs> like that, which is like super popular in the Midwest, like ambient drone sort of synth stuff too. Okay. And yeah, I just started bringing my acoustic guitar to shows and doing that and people were really encouraging about it and I've just been kind of sticking with it ever since.